Give it up for Mr. Mike Burton, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Mike Burton. All right. This is awesome. You guys sound great. You know what's cool? Like, this is a weird job. The fact that we get credits when we come up on stage. Like, every comic that you see, where they've done this, so that you know we will be funny. You know, oh, he's done that. Oh, God. You know what I mean? Like, nobody else gets that. Like, you don't hire a construction worker and be like, hey, nailed it yesterday, and here he is to screw it. Woohoo! Not that. Like, when I come up, they say, this next comic has been on Law & Order. And that's true, but that's weird for an audience. And I understand that. Because in your head, when you hear, this comic's been on Law & Order, you're like, oh, well, then he's going to be awesome, because that's one of the funniest shows on. <laughs> and we get to do other things, you know what I mean? Like, it's very cool. Like, it's... It, like, the coolest audition I've ever been on was a voiceover audition. And those are cool because you'll talk for maybe 30 seconds and they'll send you money. This was the easiest one ever because all I had to do was walk in and say, Ford Explorer, no boundaries. <laughs> That's it. That's all I had to do. Ford Explorer, no boundaries. So I do that. But the audition people are there. And they're like, well, we want you to play with it a little bit. Could you play with it? And they're like, really? All four words? <laughs> Like, no, you're a comic. You did improv with it. Can you improv? Oh, I sure can. <laughs> so I said, what about this? Ford Explorer, almost 10 miles to the gallon. <laughs> right. But they're like, no. <laughs> How about this? Ford Explorer is really fun to watch. Soccer moms try to park them. <laughs> and they're like, no. I got it, I got it. Ford Explorer, no boundary, like a guardrail or riverbed after it blows a tire. And they hated that, all right? My problem was I thought that Ford would have a sense of humor, but they don't. But I thought they would because they designed the Focus, but no. People do weird stuff, man. When I was in college, I had a knucklehead roommate. Like, he was a good guy, but he was just a knucklehead. He went out one day and bought what he thought was the coolest thing in the world. You know when somebody does that and they tell you about it, and they think you're going to jump on the, oh my God, that is great bandwagon, but your first thought is, oh my God, what's wrong with you? He comes and he's like, dude, dude, I bought us the coolest thing, the coolest thing. I bought us Kahlua flavored coffee. <gasps> what's Kahlua taste like? Anybody? Coffee, right. Dink is about coffee flavored coffee. <laughs> Eleven bucks a pound. Where'd he go, stupid? For our next big party, we'll send you out for a $40 bag of water flavored ice, you ass. <laughs> Weird. I have a six year old son. We have parents out tonight? Yeah. Up here? Yeah. I have a six-year-old son, and when you have children, people give you advice and tell you things you don't understand until later. Like, I remember when my son was going to be born, people told me, you're going to feel young again. When you have a child, it makes you feel young. They're young, you're going to feel young. Like, bullshit, all right? <laughs> but now I get it. Now he's six, I understand, all right? Because I do feel younger. I feel like I'm in college, because I need to drink all the time. <laughs> Kids are nuts, man. My son and I, we were out at a grocery store. My son and I, we were standing in line and we were waiting to check out. And it was taking kind of a while. So a guy comes up behind us and starts a conversation with my son, which is cool. He's like, hey, buddy, what's your name? My son said, Caden. Caden, well, that's a cool name. How old are you? Six. And then a guy got really cool. So do you have a girlfriend? And my son says, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm like, where was I? And then the guy got really cool. So what's her name? And my son says, Mom. Aww. I know. I was like, you can't say that. Now everybody knows we're Southern. Shut up. <laughs> I'll tell you this. We went down to Myrtle Beach this past Easter, okay? For spring break and Easter, it was all the same week. My son was out of school. So my family, we all decided, hey, let's go visit my in-laws in Myrtle Beach and go have a big beach week. And it was great. But it became like a big thing. My sister-in-law, her three kids came down. Aunts, uncles, now we're all in the same house for a week. Okay? 
there was one day where we had really bad weather. You know when you're at the beach and that happens? You can't go out. You can't spread out from everybody. You can't go to the beach. You can't go play golf for four hours. You're just all stuck in the house going, ah, ha, ha, ha. okay? So at some point, somebody said, hey, we should all go shopping. And I was like, oh, yeah, you all go shopping. And I'm like, no, no, we're all going to go. Oh, well, shit, okay? So we go shop. Now what I do when I get there is I take my son and I put him in a cart and I whip him around aisles, all right? I love it. And I do it fast, hard. Like, yeah, yeah. He thinks it's a ride, I'm entertained, all right? Like, hard, like, he'll crack a head, okay? <laughs> Not hard, just enough to sleep for a little while. So, <laughs> But there, there was one point where we came around this aisle and we had to stop because there's people coming toward us and they hate it when you hit them, so I stopped, okay? <laughs> and we had that pause where we don't know where we're going to go, all right? And they were a black couple and we're looking at each other and we're trying to figure it out. And during that pause, during that pause, my son stands up in the cart and says, Hello, black people. <laughs> They were as stunned as I was. I was like, uh, you can't say that. Why? I don't know. He didn't say anything wrong. I was like, you're going to get us killed. Why? I don't know. I'm done with the family holidays. I'm done with it. Look, it wasn't that just that that week was bad, okay? The lead up to Easter, like from Christmas until Easter, I had the same conversation with my mother-in-law every time we talked. Whether it's in person or on the phone, several times a week, sometimes several times a day, same conversation. Put her in a home. <laughs> I said that out loud, sorry. So, <laughs> But look, you'll be on. But look, here's the deal. Here's the conversation we had hundreds of times. This conversation. You know what we're gonna do this Easter? This Easter, we're gonna get you an Easter Bunny costume. <gasps> no, you can dress up like an Easter Bunny for the children. You're funny. The children love you. We'll all chip in and get you an Easter Bunny costume. No, it'll be funny. You're funny. You're a comedian. We'll all chip in. You, you can be a funny bunny. <laughs> And I said, well, wait a minute, what? What about this? What about instead, what if I go out, I get a Jesus costume, and I come back in three days? <laughs> get out of here. So I was down south doing shows. I, went to, I, was, I was in Raleigh, North Carolina doing some shows, okay? And after a show, I like to go out to a bar and just relax after a show. I just want to have a drink and relax, especially me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I go to the staff of the comedy club. And I said, hey, is there like a local place I can go after this? And they said, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, right next door is a country bar, and it's really cool. And I was like, well, I have never heard anybody say that and mean it. All right, I'll go. <laughs> So I go to this country bar. The first thing I see is there's a mechanical bull in the back, which is weird, because it's 2009. <laughs> so I walk over to the big bouncer, like, dude, dude, does anybody actually ride that bull, or is it just for show? And he goes, no, man, around midnight, people get all liquored up, and they will get on that bull. And I said, all right, then I'm staying. <laughs> So I go over to the bar and I want to get a beer, but I can't because there's girls dancing on the bar. They were dancing everywhere. They were line dancing. They were achy breaky. Like time stood still in 1992 and they just didn't move. I was looking for cell phones this big. Hello, can you hear me? We can get Hootie and the Blowfish tickets. He's black. What? So, <laughs> so I'm at the bar and I do, and I want to get a beer, and he and finally, like midnight rolls around and I do. I get a beer and he's not kidding. They're lined up to get on that bull. Men and women are lined up and guys are serious about it. They give guys a leather glove to put on and they have to get on that bull just right. They have to get their hand and the handle just right. <laughs> Go! It's like redneck karaoke, you know what I mean? <laughs> They get a karaoke bar, they have one serious guy, and you know in his head, he's thinking, they're gonna think I'm Bon Jovi. No, we don't, Dick. <laughs> we don't want you dead or alive. We want you out. <laughs> but then girls get on, and it's hot, man. It's unbelievably hot. Because girls ride the bull, the bull comes up and back, 
So when a girl rides, it's a completely different experience. As soon as a girl gets on the bull, it is... And I was like, wow! And I thought I was gonna have to leave, because it's about to break a zipper, and that's embarrassing. But I'm glad that I didn't, because two girls got on, and they faced each other. Because when they face each other, the bull comes up and back. Then when this girl comes back, then her face has to come right into her titties. <laughs> and I was going, wow! I thought I was going to have to run to the bathroom and glue a door shut. It was phenomenal. Now there's a lesson there. That lesson is I now go to a lot more country balls. You guys are great. Thanks for letting me play around.